Hello and welcome back. Okay, I've got a kit today. I wanted one of these for a while, but I've ordered a kit for a Geiger Muller tube and some of the driver circuitry. It's quite a basic kit, but uh, let's take a look at it. Okay, this box looked a bit beaten up when it arrived, but let's hope it's all okay inside. Right, that's empty. Now, this actually looks pretty cool. Now, I'm worried there's a risk of spraying components everywhere if I uh, don't do this right. Okay, so these resistors look like they've been pre-shaped. I've never had that before. Okay, C22. Okay, right, so one is definitely this top left. Eight is the dip eight chip holder. That doesn't appear to line up. I think we may have to do some guesswork on this or actual component research. And here's the actual Geiger Muller tube itself. Audio cable, USB power lead, pumps, batteries, and some PCB spacers, I imagine, are for that to hold it up. Right, so I'm pretty sure the components in the tray don't actually line up with this at all. That may be more of a distraction. A lot of these I think we're going to be able to get just by component counting fire up the soldering iron and see what we can do. Now we want to start with the smallest components, so that's going to be the resistors. It's a lot less choice once we've got through those. Right, the only thing here with six components is the 10M. I'm just going to assume that's what that is. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 33. Right, so there's seven. There's ten, eight, nine. All going to be screaming at me for where R thirty three is. Oh, there it is. R one and R two are thirty three k. These are one k. So it's three and twenty three. Now, where's R3? Oh, there it is. I think that's probably enough components to start soldering. Next pair of resistors. These are 10K, so it's 16 and 24. There it is. These are the 33K, R1 and R2. There's three of these, so it has to be the 470K. 17, 19, 20. And now we're on to the singles. 47K, that's going to be 18. Didn't solder that one. 100K, so that's R5. R32, this is 3K, R4, am I being blind for not being able to see R4? This is weird, there's, there's an R4 here but I can't find it on the board, have I messed up? There's also an R34 here which I can't see on the, on the bomb. Now in the photo on the website there is no part here. So now I'm just being blind and not seeing the actual four. Oh, there it is. Actual blindness. That is L1, purely based on where it can fit. What's the next lowest profile component? It's 102, 271. 
104. So that's definitely 0.1 UF. C3, C23. 3, 23, 24, and 66. So we've got 23, 3, 24, and 66. It's a resistor I missed earlier. Right, so 102. One nanofarad, so that's five and twenty-two. There's a resistor down here I keep missing as well. Twenty-seven one, so it's two seventy picofarad C twenty-one. I think that's the last of the ceramic caps. Need my little jar of off cuts. Apparently for some high-end soldering jobs you have to cut all the leads before you solder the components to avoid stressing the solder joints. Okay, what's next? Some diodes here. These arguably should have been before the ceramics. We've got two LEDs here. So uh, D23 and D24. There's four things in a transistor package. S8050 and a KSP42. That'd be that. One, three, and four. That'll do. Right, what's left? There's some jumpers here, so that implies that there's some settings we need to work out. And these are ceramic caps. Right, 103. It's going to be 10 nanofarads. Here we go. C6, 7, and 20. Okay, so. 20 has a lot more room for it. C1 and C2, these are little electrolytics, they're labelled plus, so the opposite side is negative. It's always the white stripe. Okay, so in the reference picture I've got, this one and the one in the middle have jumpers on. Hopefully there's some information somewhere on what they actually mean. Uh, that one's labelled test. Here's the switch. So the pins on the sockets were, uh, or at least that one was slightly squished. Took a little bit of effort to get it in. Okay, so two of these chips are 555s, which are a chip I've worked with quite a few times on this channel. And the other is an LM358 which if I'm not mistaken is an op-amp. Now I do see an audio jack here, so I wouldn't be surprised if we find that op-amp connected to the output there. Yep, there's the audio jack. At least one pin is direct connected across, no surprise. Now that first connection is terrible, but what I'm of course doing, just getting one pin connected to hold the component in place, and then come back to it. No, 
I think this is just two different options for getting power into the device, which is actually quite a cool feature. There was a battery clip and a USB power cable. So it's three cells, so it's going to be four and a half volts or five volts from the USB. I'm guessing the circuit's not too worried about the difference there. Definitely think this is the most components I've done on a kit before. I think this is an inductor with polarity markings on it at least. Now I've got three of these and three spaces for this, so my guess is we actually don't need all of them. Wonder if this is for two different lengths of tube. Guide image has all of them in, so that's what I'll do. These must be the 555s. Five, five, fives. Okay, I see no reason for this device to have polarity, but I'm going to put it in the same way around as it is. Okay, well, that feels quite short. That's kind of done. Have a quick inspect of solder joints. I don't think there's a lack of connection here. I just don't like seeing the gap. There's a couple of jumpers. There's a trim here. I assume there's documentation around somewhere to tell me what that is. Let's try powering it up though. Well, we've got just over 5 volts coming through there. This should be 5 volts here. That made me jump. Yeah, so now we've got power at the power rails. That actually sounds quite promising, doesn't it? Is this actually working? All right, I need some radiation. Now, anything to do with radiation normally scares people, but at low levels, it's not that bad, but obviously care is always needed. I do have a small radiation source in here, in theory. Yes. That is behaving the way you would expect. Now what this is, is a mantle of a gas light. And they used to make these out of thorium. They don't anymore, but thorium is mildly radioactive. And we've got a working guide counter here. But we're not really counting anything. But what I will do is spend some time working out some of the connections around here. I suspect we've got an output that's probably uh, just binary. In fact, let's fire up the scope and see what we've got. Just realized my camera went off there during uh, my hunt for wires. So I had to pause for a recharge. But I do have some DuPont females I've found. Don't have a male to female, but... Okay, we're getting something there. Wasn't on the right setting. Okay, so that looks like it's pretty much going rail to rail, 5 volt. That's awesome. Now I'm guessing this little pot here is for, to adjust the sensitivity. We haven't needed to touch that to get a 
usable result out of this. But I'm, uh, I'm kind of pleased that we got this kit to do anything at all, to be honest. That's nice. Now, I've got a few ideas that I want to do with this, and the fact that we've got what looks like a TTL compatible signal coming out the, the end is, uh, is going to be handy. Okay, so I'm really pleased I got this working. I've actually just had a bit of a scan around my house using uh, a portable power supply and confirmed that there's uh, nothing I can uh, immediately find that's uh, even remotely as radioactive as that uh, little light mantle. So uh, that's probably a good thing. Now, I would point out that this is a homemade kit and there is nothing for us to tell this is even remotely accurate. Um, there's no counter readout display. Although one thing that I would like to do in the future is use those signal outputs to interface to something like a microcontroller and see if we can start turning this into some kind of an instrument with a, a count readout. Now there's nothing on here that looks even remotely like a voltage regulator, so we would probably need to add a stable voltage supply in order to uh, make this have any semblance any semblance of repeatability and we would have to calibrate it against a, a known device. Um, we're never going to make something like this into an accurate scientific instrument but we should be able to get it in the general ballpark by uh, applying a, a few basic principles to it. One of my ideas for what I want to do with this is actually to construct a true random number generator because of course it's believed that radioactive decay is a quantum event and so if we construct a source of random numbers that keys off the, the pulses coming out of here, we would in fact have um, something that is physically truly random. And that might be quite fun to, uh, to build an interface. So look for a couple of uh, little projects coming forward with this in the future. All right, I hope you found it interesting. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Goodbye.